so moved by this amazing turnout. Thank you so much to my family. I, I cannot tell you, it's just been this incredible experience for the last couple months. We've been very busy putting this all together from uh, my husband doing the food today from Cornwall Bakery to my son, Elliot, and my daughter, Hannah, working the TWI uh, merchandise table. And my parents are here. They've made about 50 trips back and forth from Chicago to Michigan to keep me calm and keep me focused and keep me organized. So it's just a true honor, honestly, to see this huge turnout today and to have all this love and support. Everywhere I looked when I turned around, it was just another friend, uh, friendly face. So thank you again. And a huge thank you to our a fabulous list of speakers today. We have a lot of inspiration ahead for the afternoon, and we have fabulous pop-up vendors um, and lots of fun ahead today, so I hope you enjoy. So what is the Thriving Well Institute? Well, it was an institute that was born organically. I kept saying that I felt like I was catching the coattails of this institute project. I, I feel like it was out in front of me, and I was just trying to kind of catch up with all the things that were happening in the last month. But it made perfect sense to me after 23 years of working with thousands of patients, helping clients really learn how to move from surviving to thriving. And I thought it would be a really great plan to try to put all the work that I've done in the last two decades under one umbrella and name it the Thriving Well Institute. I wanted to reach a larger audience and teach more people how to thrive. But only after I learned how to do it myself. So I have a little story. And the reason why I use this headshot is because it has a lot to do with the metaphor of hitting a brick wall. In 2002, I was working 20 hours a week at a hospital that was 30 minutes away from my house. I was also driving another 45 minutes in the opposite direction to finish my graduate degree at U of M. I was also raising that young man who was only one years old at the time, and I was busy writing papers, finishing emails, trying to develop a program, and I was spinning in circles. I wasn't thriving. I was just surviving. And I was in front of my baby, and I would think to myself, I have to do something for work. And when I was in front of work, I thought, I have to do something for, for school. And then when I was in front of school, I was thinking about work again, or my baby, or something from home. I was never feeling present and mindful. And I found myself heading to the parking garage at University of Michigan, and I felt like my peripheral vision was starting to come in on me. My legs were getting wobbly. My heart rate was increasing. I think I was in the middle of what Brene Brown calls a spiritual awakening. <laughs> um, it could have been a little anxiety attack. I felt a little overwhelmed uh, by everything that I had going on. And I remember kind of hitting the wall and thinking, I can't do it like this anymore. I'm not enjoying my life. I don't feel connected. I don't feel like I'm living in joy and I felt like everything was always spinning out of control. So I decided that I was gonna seek therapy myself, and I landed on the couch of a great therapist who helped me understand all the things I needed to know about living in a mindful way. And she said to me at that very first session, I want you to go home tonight and be right in front of what you're in front of. And I thought, I'm a straight A student. I got that assignment, and I'm going to go home and rock that. And so I went home, and again, I started spinning. I was thinking, I have to make dinner. I have to put the baby in the bath. I got to write a paper. I got to finish the email. I had all these things going, and I remembered her words, and I thought, just be in front of what you're in front of. And so I went down into the basement, and it was just time to move the laundry. And I remember pulling out the load of hot white clothes. And this was in 2002. So how many loads have I done since then? Maybe 40,000. <laughs> I remember that load of laundry like it was yesterday. I opened up the dryer, and I brought my senses to the experience. Do you know there's a little light that glows inside that miraculous machine? <laughs> I saw the light. I actually pulled the clothes out and pressed the hot white chef coats up against my body. And I can remember the smell of the laundry detergent. I was suddenly awake and alive and grateful. It was a turning point in my life where I went from hitting the wall to what felt like having it all. That's why I really love this headshot, because it helps me remember that brick wall metaphor. Come on in. We have some space up here. Come on in. We'll make room for you for sure. We have a couple seats at the left side, too. So what is our mission with the Thriving Well Institute? It's very simple. We're committed to helping people and businesses learn how to thrive. We want this institute 
to be something that is super accessible for people. When you think about, oh, I can't get to, there we go, accessibility. When you think about why we did this institute, what comes to mind for me is that a lot of people are feeling like access to mental health care is stigmatized, it's difficult to reach, it's hard to find a provider, it's difficult to find events that you feel comfortable going to. This is a mental health event. Did you have fun when you walked in the door? Do you feel stigmatized being here? It's a wonderfully welcome atmosphere where you're going to find that you feel a, a sense of community with people who are also wanting to thrive just like you. So accessibility was super important to me. When you think about the field of lawyers and doctors and what they're experiencing in every, cro in every section of the industry today, you will find there are people experiencing high levels of burnout and high levels of suicide and mental health is on the rise. We see it across the entire country and we're trying to keep up with a really unsustainable model that just doesn't work. It was like me spinning in circles. So I really wanted to try to bring some knowledge to people based on 23 years of clinical work but also spiritual work and empath work and intuitive work and kind of combine all of those things to bring them to a larger audience. So why an institute? We wanted to bring in knowledge. Knowledge is power. We call it in our field psychoeducation. And the more people know and understand about anxiety or depression or coping strategies or communication skills or reframing their perspective, the more they understand self-care and mindfulness, the more they are equipped to handle life stressors and co consequently enjoy their life more. The next pillar of our institute is experience. We want you to be able to really embody the experience of thriving. That's why the retreats that I've run have been such a sensory experience for people. People are able to really immerse themselves in what it feels like to eat clean and to feel good and to be in a touch point with nature where all of the things that are stressing you out are set to the side and you're able to actually be in a space where you feel connected not only to yourself but a community around you. When we know what it feels like to thrive, we automatically want more of it. And you learn how good it feels to live at an optimal level of functioning. The fourth pillar is reach. It was time for me to expand my reach after spending all this time working with clients both here and abroad. I thought I would take this method of thriving and this formula to a larger audience. So what is the problem that we're facing today? The problem is we're just surviving our lives. How many times are people asking you at a party, how are you doing? And what is the answer? I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I feel like I'm drowning in my life. I can't, I can't get everything done. We wear busy like a badge of courage. And I think we really need to make a change to that. I feel like, yeah, I hear people saying yes to that, right? People are feeling swamped in their lives, and it's not sustainable. We have a fight or flight response, and we spike up to the top of that, and then we sustain it, and we never really come back down. We need to make a change to that, and it's not real living. So we're often all feeling overwhelmed, overcommitted, and it's having a huge impact not only on our personal life, but our business relationships as well. I feel there's a change that we can make to this, and here's my solution. I think we can thrive through a few things. I believe that no matter where people come, when they land on my couch for therapy, I always start with self-care first. Just like the therapist did for me, she was helping me tune in to what was really important. There is an advantage to taking good care of yourself. And I think we, especially women, feel like we're being selfish when we do that. I think we need to move beyond that and, and really give it to ourselves because you can't be a good caregiver. You can't be a good employer. You can't be a good employee. You can't be a great parent or partner or friend if you're not taking great care of yourself. Mindfulness is another piece of this. I feel that's where the, the joy of life really lives. 
when we live in a place that's really mindful, then we feel really awake and alive. We're not thinking too much about what happened yesterday, and we're not thinking too much about what happens tomorrow. Gratitude practices are actually things that people need to practice on a regular basis. We can tune in to practicing gratitude, and it can help us shift ourselves from a negative perspective into one that's positive. Communication strategies are really important, and not only just for your relationships outside of your um, self, but also communication with yourself. Tuning into who you are and what you need is a really healthy form of communication, too. Managing healthy boundaries is the last one, and I really focus highly on this because it's important that we take care of ourselves. When we don't do that, then we're not really helping anyone in our lives. So let's talk for a minute in a really honest way about hashtag not thriving. <laughs> when Kathy and I were getting ready to get this um, program together for everyone, it was a month of lots and lots of busy planning and lots of work. And there were many times when I would write her and be like, um, I, ha I think I had oatmeal last this morning at 7 AM, and now it's 7 PM, and I'm a hashtag not thriving. I was like, I don't even know that I had dinner today. There were a lot of these moments. And I want to get really honest, because I don't think it's fair to say that we learn a thriving well method, for example, and then we land there for life. That's not true. Our life will always give us lots of ups and downs. It's just that when you have a better toolbox, you're more equipped to handle those bumps in the road. But I'm going to show you now a photo that no one should ever see. <laughs> but I'm going to be brave, because that's part of my mantra. Um, so I really want to, I'm going to set this up a little bit, tell you a little story. Um, this is, this, OK, so six weeks ago, raise your hand if you were in Costa Rica six weeks ago. <laughs> six weeks ago. OK, we have a lot of Costa Rica friends here. And Lori, thank God for Lori. Lori was at my side helping me through this retreat. You know what I'm going to do next, right? <laughs> this photo, you're going to love this. It's, it's me, it's not you. <laughs> she was like, uh-oh. <laughs> So prior, host, prior to hosting the international retreat in Costa Rica, this was our sixth time down there, um, I built the website for Thriving Well Institute. I created all the branding and social media channels. I helped my husband with his pop-up dinners. We do a little tiny um, <laughs> five-course <laughs> seated dinners for 44 guests once a month. That's easy. Um, <laughs> we do that all the time. Uh, my husband and I were also choir booster presidents for South, and we took 100 kids and 100 parents to nationals in Chicago and help them win the national championship. <laughs> I managed my full-time practice, um, helped relocate three interns to, from the Dominican Republic to Gross Point, uh, filled an apartment full of furniture for them and got them set up. Um, we were simultaneously also trying to plan the details for our Tuscany food and wine tour in October and managing my household and my two children and a dog that required stitches, <laughs> which required five trips to the veterinarian because she kept eating the bandage and eating her cone. So I was hashtag not thriving. <laughs> Needless to say, sometimes I feel like I could be a superwoman, but I am not. And I'm going to go way out on a limb here and share this next slide with you. So brace yourself. And you're welcome to laugh, because I know you can relate. One of the mornings that we were in the Costa Rica retreat, I was feeling extremely tired. I, I just kind of all hit me at once. And I woke up in the morning. Um, I, I didn't sleep well the night before. I think I had too much caffeine and too much tarantula phobia um, to quiet my mind. <laughs> <laughs> And I was supposed to run a morning group and be ready to teach other people how to thrive. And I woke up, and, I, and Lori looked at me. We were sharing a room, and my good friend Lori Lipton, she's a speaker here today as well, and she looked over at me and was like, are you, are you going to be OK? Is this going to be all right? You look a little tired. I was like, I got this. Listen, back up. I was like, I'm going to have breakfast. I can totally do this. If I have a shower and a coffee, I can totally do this. I know I can. She was like, OK, I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is a no for you. So here it is. <laughs> so I am, <laughs> do I look like I'm thriving there? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. 
Ready to run a group? Yeah. <laughs> that, look at the eyes. Like, it's like sheer exhaustion. Um, so yeah, I'm not afraid to share that because I know you know what it's like. Raise your hand if you've ever felt this way. <laughs> so I'm not perfect and neither are you. And we have to stop lying to ourselves because it's hurtful. So I wanted to share this because part of my new mantra in building the institute is showing up brave. And I want you to see what it looks like when a therapist like myself, who can handle a lot on her plate, really falls and needs a friend. And so what did I do? I had to learn how to ride the wave and know that this is just a bump in my path. This is not your new normal, Meg. Suff suffering is temporary. You've got permission to rest. Lean into your community. And Lori ran the group for me that morning, thank God, so I could lay my head back down on that pillow and just rest so I could feel better for later. And then the last one, reboot and thrive again. So what is the formula? Oh, it looks like it's a little bit funny on that second column there. That's good. See, that's also, that was intentional. <laughs> So our formula here has a lot to do with embracing your vulnerabilities, practicing gratitude, showing up brave and authentically, practicing clear and honest communication, self-care like crazy, accept discomfort. You can see how that goes there. Let go of what people think, right? I wouldn't be able to stand here and kind of chuckle with you if I really was in the space of not feeling confident that I knew that you love me and that you feel those things too, right? So be mindful of your surroundings. Be in the moment and manage your boundaries. So what do we offer with the Institute? We have three very specific arms of service. One is coaching. And under the coaching arm, we provide individual coaching, provider level coaching. So if, for example, you're a therapist or a wellness provider that would like to be able to offer retreats or boost your practice, I have a formula for that. Because actually right now, I can't take another single referral. There's too many coming my way. So I can help teach you how to manage your practice and make it thrive as well. And for business relationships, I've been recently moving my work from a little bit of individual and couples therapy into helping um, business partnerships and co-founders help their relationship so that they can help their business thrive as well. It's sort of like couples therapy, but for business founders. And events is our second arm. Um, you can see we do events like the one you did today. We're going to be hosting more of these along the way throughout the year. We do weekend retreats and week-long um, experiences too. And in your gift bag today, you'll see there's some information in there about Red Mountain Retreat, which is coming up in September. Who was with us for the last Red Mountain Retreat? That was awesome. That was a great experience. Um, so we're going to be returning to that same property again. I can't wait to go back in the fall. And you have a little coupon code in your bag if you're interested in joining us. That's good for people who attended this event today. And then the last arm is speaking. So you can learn, practice, and thrive. So what's my ask today? I want you to do a few things for me. I'd like you to follow us on social media. We have a Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter page. I'd like you to sign up on our website for our newsletter so you can stay informed. And I'll be sending out some informative blogs. That will be my new platform for blogging. I'm going to be driving tra traffic to that site, the Thriving Well Institute site. And I want you to connect. So if you have a group or a business or an organization that you think might enjoy a one-day wellness program or a speaking engagement, something to help your team understand the foundation of thriving, self-care, all of those wonderful things, leadership um, trainings, team building trainings, all different kinds of things like that, then I'm asking you to connect. Think of your organizations, your church groups, your businesses, and all of those pieces. And here's our information about our Red Mountain Retreat. So you do have a coupon code that's valid today through June 4th at midnight. You can save $150 on your registration. And um, we're going to be doing a four-night stay in September at that beautiful resort in the Red Rocks of Utah. So I hope that you get a chance to come and thrive with us. It's going to be a wonderful event. So that is the message today. Learn, experience, and thrive. And that is the foundation of the Thriving Well Institute. Mm -hmm.